So welcome, welcome to this uh, blueprint data access and visualization webinar. My name is Christian Zinser. I'm the head of consulting at Genomatics GmbH, and uh, we are um, partner in the blueprint um, consortium. And I have the joy to introduce you today to um, two ways how you can access and visualize uh, data that were generated in the, the Blueprint Consortium. A few technical things, I will mute you so that we have uh, good audio quality. <coughs> I hope everybody can understand me well. If not, please let me know. I will. I will take questions at the end. You can also um, you can also um, use the webinar control panel that you have on your screen to um, enter questions, and I will try to answer them as good as I can. Yeah. Okay, so now everybody will be muted and we'll start the webinar. All right, so Blueprint, as many of you might already know, is a European research project which studies the epigenomes of uh, blood cells, of hematopoietic cells. Blueprint will generate data from the samples of more than uh, 100 individuals. It's part of the seventh framework program of the EU and um, is also part of the International Human Epigenome um, Consortium, the IHAC. An overview of today's webinar. I will show you a few slides. Um, how you can access Blueprint data. We will concentrate on two um, parts um, of uh, the Blueprint the website. One is the Blueprint uh, Data Coordination uh, Center portal, so the DCC portal. I will give you a short introduction overview and show you what you can do on uh, the files page, the data set page, and the experiment page, which are different views on the data that you can download from there. And then I will show you the genomatics visual interface, how you can use it, and um, how you can um, um, well get access to the annotated data files uh, that are provided there, how you can run a data file comparison and the filtering, and how you can do a pathway analysis of uh, genes that you get out of that and how you can visualize the data then in the genome browser that is part of the genomatics visual interface. You can access Blueprint data via the Blueprint website. I will show you um, this live um, shortly here at, at uh, http www.blueprint-epigenome.eu. In the Data Coordination Center portal, you can search and also download the data that were generated by the Blueprint Consortium, the latest release. It's the seventh data release actually um, came out in September last year. You can download both process data directly from the DCC portal, so for example, Gypsic peaks or expression data, methylation data, hyper, hyper and hypermethylation uh, regions. This is open access, so you can just uh, download it without any uh, further ado after you found the files that you are interested in. And there's also access to raw data, <clears throat> namely the fast Q sequences and the BAM files. They are actually um, stored um, at the European Genome Phenome Archive. And in order to um, get access to uh, the raw data there, you need to apply 
to the Blueprint Data Access Committee. You find the application forms on the Blueprint webpage under Data Access, Access to Blueprint Data. So what do you find at the Data Coordination Center portal? You find um, mainly three different um, pages. One is the experiment page, then the files page and the data sets page. On the experiments page, um, you get an overview, a matrix actually of um, the data that were released so far. And you can also um, get to the raw data um, in the archives and uh, get the analysis results. On the files page, you have a list of the primary analysis results, which you can download um, or access from there. And uh, in the data sets page, you have the um, EGA data sets um, as a list um, that were generated by Blueprint. The available data are, on the one hand, chip data for a number of different um, histone marks, different, um, different um, His tone marks, which are either uh, marks for active uh, uh, transcription or for repression, repression of uh, transcription, also input uh, DNA for the, uh, the GYPSIC data. Then you have DNA's one hypersensitivity regions. You have uh, hypermethylation and hypomethylation um, regions, and you have expression data as well. Tissue types that are available are, on the one hand, uh, bone marrow, quite a lot of them. Then we have uh, cord and venous blood. We have also some cell lines, and we have uh, some data from tonsils and from uh, thymus. The available data types are, on the one hand, well, you get uh, enriched regions from your chip sequencing data. You get normalized signal out of that. You get context, which is uh, a uh, merged, uh, the merged regions from the um, mapped reads, and you get a number of different uh, data from, from the um, RNA sequencing. From the RNA sequencing um, experiments, then you get the DNA seq hotspots, so the peaks in the end, um, the regions where you have um, DNA seq. Um, data, methylation signal, and hyper- and hypermethylated regions. The different um, cell types that are covered, um, there's quite a lot of them actually. Here is an overview of uh, the hematopoiesis in humans. And you see that uh, you have um, the common uh, progenitor here, and you have uh, the milder cell, um, branch of uh, the um, development, and you have the lymphoid branch of the develop development, and everything that has a green overlay here actually um, is also represented in the blueprint um, data. So this includes the lymphoid and myeloid progenitors. <clears throat> it includes the megakaryocyte um, erythrocyte progenitor, the granulocyte monocyte progenitor, and also the megachoricytes, erythroblasts, and neutrophiles, actually um, a whole uh, line, which is uh, of a developmental line of neutrophils, which is not shown here in this overview, eosinophils, monocytes, and um, macrophages and antigen pres uh, presenting um, cells, the dendritic cells here, and from the lymphoid um, branch T lymphocytes, different T lymphocytes, B lymphocytes, and plasma cells, and NK cells. It's a long list, actually. I won't go into the details, just so that you see that we have uh, a number of uh, different cell types available. For example, um, different T cells, uh, thymocytes, B cells. Um, memory, T 
T-cells, macrophages, etc. Okay, before we go to the next slides, a few things directly in the system. So here you see the Blueprint website. And on the website, you can access the data using the data access link. And here there's a link access to Blueprint data. And here you have a number of different links. Um, information here, for example, the information about um, how you can apply um, to get um, access to the raw data. And um, the two um, parts that I'd like to show you today are here. Um, accessible via this link, Blueprint DCC portal, and the Genomatics browser. So, on the Blueprint DCC portal, you have, well, first of all, a kind of a welcome page. And on this welcome page, a bit of an overview of what can be found here. You have a menu bar where you can directly access the different pages within the DCC. And you have some basic and basic overview of what you, <coughs> sorry, about what you can find in uh, on the page. Let's actually start with the files page where you have the primary analysis results. You can open this in a new tab here. And uh, the structure of the pages you have on the left hand side a number of um, filters um, that you can set. On the one hand, you have um, the types of experiments which are available. You always have the number of um, files that are available for each experiment type. There is um, sometimes a J plus sign button at the top. And you can, if you click it, you see the whole list of um, data that are available here. So we have experiment. We also have, you can also filter by the analysis provider. You can filter by the type of data. So for example, enriched regions or transcription quantification. You can filter by the cell type, a long list. So it's sorted actually by the number of available files. Then you have cell lines, you have tissues, you have the sex, and you also can filter directly for specific donors, which are shown here with a code. So more to the right, you have the list of files um, that are available. And you can download them using the download buttons here. You have a source description, what type of experiment it is, what type of data file it is, uh, the format size, etc. And you also have um, links to the protocols that are relevant for um, the type of ex experiment and um, meter data for the files. And there is also a search field which also allows you to filter um, the list. So I'd like to show you an example. So let's say we want to see which data are available for um, 
mature neutrophils in venous blood and um, the um, trimethylated form of um, the histone 3. So we can filter starting with a H3K4ME3 here. If you click on an entry, it will be highlighted in blue and will be um, set to the top of the list. You can actually sit, uh, click several of them if you want to um, see them in one list together. Then I'll get the cell type, mature neutrophil, 32 are left here. And I want to see only those that we have in the venous blood. You see that there are also a few here in cord blood. This leaves 28. Now, if I want to see only those, um, you see that we have, we have files of different formats here in big bad, in bad text, uh, big weak, the, the normal signal. If I want to see only these, um, the files, the big weak files, I can additionally set the type here, normalized signal. So that leaves me. seven files which I can download here. You can also um, get uh, the protocol for these files. Open this here in a new tab. So you have an, a description of the analysis pipeline that was used for chip sequencing here. Or you can also get the metadata where you get a list of the available files once more in the different formats. And you also get an explanation of uh, what metadata is actually available, different fields and what is actually what. You can also download the metadata, the whole list, including the metadata from here by clicking on the download button. and can, for example, open it here in an Excel file. And this gives you the list of the files that are available. So alternatively, you can also use the, the search field up here. Let me just um, remove a few of the filters here. I click again on mature neutrophil in, or in order to remove it. And I also remove the cell type venous blood. I keep the normalized signal and keep the H3K4ME3 and I just enter neutrophil. Here we go. The list is now automatically filtered <coughs> by the description field here and any type of neutrophil that is available um, is now listed here. You see band form neutrophils here, uh, neutrophils. We have, you have segmented neutrophils of bone marrow. You have uh, myelocyte, neutrophilic myelocyte, for example. So that's how you can filter for data files in this list. And as I said, in order to download, you just click on the link here and uh, the download can be started. An alternative way is to access um, the data sets using the button 
up here. Here you get a list of the available data sets with the data set IDs, the description and when they were released. You can also access um, data sets from older releases via the files and the experiment pages. You get the data sets of the current release, which uh, were mapped to the current human genome, so the HG38, whereas the earlier uh, releases, which are also listed here, um, have uh, files or include files that were mapped to the previous version, the um, HG19. So in order to get, for example, RNA sequencing data from macrophages from the newest release, you would click on the newest release here. Click on the data type, RNA sequencing. And then you can enter macrophage here in the search field. Now this leaves you three data sets and you can access information about the data sets by clicking on the link. On the data set page, you have two lists. On one hand, you have the list of available um, data sets in the fast queue format, to see it here. And if you scroll down, you will also find a list of the BAM files that correspond to the fast queue files. Again, you have some metadata information about the files. Um, you have also information about the ontology of the cell type here with uh, this, these CL um, links, which lead to the onto B page that corresponds to the cell type. And also a link to the ontology of the tissue, venous blood in this case. Again, you can download the list of the files here in order to actually get the access to the fast queue or to the BOM files. You um, would go to the um, European Genome Phenome Archive and uh, download it from there, but as I said, it's uh, restricted and you need to apply um, to the data access, access committee in order to um, be able to do that. You can get information about the downloadable files by clicking on the link here. So you see the files here in different formats, transcription signal. You have some, um, you have a file here with uh, unique mappings. Okay, so um, for the actual, for the actual um, transcription quantification data, you have a link to Reactome. So if you click on this load button and then click then on the view button for Reactome, you get the Reactome pathway analysis program with an overview of the different pathways that are um, in the system and also with um, Color coding here, I have a green-red color. You might have also a, a blue and yellow color instead of that. 
um, a color code that um, shows you which pathways um, are expressed. The expression data are also shown here in the form of a um, the um, a log uh, not not a log transform actually an inverse hyperbolic sine transformed um, tr TPM value so transcripts per, uh, per million value, and uh, you see in red uh, the uh, the the pathways which have uh, rather low expression in green you have pathways with high, with high expression and you can double click for example here on the pathway that we have here in the immune system area um, on antigen processing cross presentation and this will open the pathway diagram which we see here and you can also have a look at the expression values for the elements and pathways. You can zoom in a little and you can do a right click on a node in the pathway, a protein complex, for example here, and you get the expression values again in the transformed um, form for the different, for the different um, proteins in this pathway. And you can select any of them and you will see also the expression values as a marker here in the on the expression scale here on the on the right hand side. Okay, so much for the um, DCC portal. Now I'd like to switch to the genomatics visual interface and actually give you a short introduction just showing a few slides. So the genomatics visual interface can again be accessed via the Blueprint website or directly via uh, blueprint.genomatics.de. Here we have um, the blueprint data sets with additional um, annotation from the literature, from gene ontology and uh, from OMIM. And you can do comparison of uh, the files. You can um, see correlations and um, you can filter the data sets. Included, in is, also, included is also a pathway um, analysis uh, program where you can do a pathway analysis of uh, filtered data. Uh, and also included is a visualization uh, in the genome browser where you can run an overlay with a, a number of different data tracks, for example, from ENCODE, um, transcription factor binding sites, histone modifications, etc., chromatin states, and a number of other things. You can correlate your expression data with epigenomic data. And you can do an in-depth analysis. I will show you this then live. Plus the visualization in the genome browser. Okay, so let me just close a few of the tabs here. Here on the Blueprint homepage we have uh, the link here to the Genomatics browser. So in the Genomatics browser you can either log in anonymously as a guest or you can contact blueprint at genomatics.de to get your own personal account. If you have your own personal account, you can save um, some results in uh, both in the genomatics pathway system um, and also views in the genomatics um, browser, uh, browser, which you cannot do as a, an anonymous uh, guest. So just log in here.
Okay, so you get on the one hand a menu bar up here where you can select uh, the different uh, parts of the program. You can also access help and you can log out here and you can also change your password if you have a personal uh, account. Down here you have four buttons which allow you to access the sample comparison view. You can directly access comparison results that have already been generated. You can start the genome browser here and you can also start um, the pathway system. I'm going to show you the sample comparison first. So on the sample comparison page, you have a list of the available samples. You see the experiment type, the tissue type, cell type, treatment if there is any, donor ID, gender, age group, health status, um, etc. We also have a link to the FTP site here. And you can combine filters in order to select data files that you want to compare. You have the filter fields up here and you can select values from these drop-down lists. You can also set the filter here on the left-hand side of this panel where you can combine um, filters in a bit more sophisticated way. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you a comparison of uh, data actually from neutrophils. Uh, just to show you one last slide here. You see here the stages of the neutrophil maturation starting with the myeloblast going via the promyelocyte, myelocyte and metamyelocyte. You see the um, the development here in the um, graph of the cell band neutrophil and then in the under-segmented mature uh, neutrophil. And um, we have data there actually where we can compare the um, data from band cells, sorry, actually from neutrophilics, uh, from segmented neutrophils um, and uh, the neutrophilic metamyelocyte. Okay, there is actually one donor that provides provided the corresponding cell types, which I select here. So from this donor, female donor, we have uh, band from neutrophils and we have the neutrophilic myelocytes and we have uh, segmented neutrophils and we have the neutrophilic metamyelocytes. And um, you can actually um, open a file also without doing a comparison. So for example, here in the, uh, this file here um, where we have uh, the RNA from the band form neutrophil we open that. We see the genes and the corresponding expression values with their start and end position and the chromosome. And um, you can also add additional fields here, additional annotation from the literature, from OMIM and from gene ontology. And um, if I, for example, add literature diseases here and literature tissues, you see that. And I can, for example, filter here for 
neutrophil. Band cells. And get the corresponding genes um, that are associated with uh, this cell type. Okay, going back to the page where I can set up a comparison. I now choose the option compare experiments down here. And um, here you can just drag and drop files from this list in order to set up your comparison. What I will use are, on the one hand, um, RNA sequencing data, then um, the H3K27, acetylated version, and H3K4ME3, so the trimethylated version of um, histone 3. Also, the trimethylated version of the um, lysine 27, which is a um, repressive mark in comparison to the um, acetylation here and the methylation here, which are both um, activating marks. And I will also um, include the monomethylation mark here, which is also an, an activating mark. And I will um, use this from the neutrophilic metamyelocyte and from the segmented neutrophil. So I'll just drag this over here. And the same for the segmented neutrophil. You can change the binning size here. I will just uh, keep that uh, at 1,000 um, base pairs. You can also select a smaller binning size. So the uh, um, signal that we get then in uh, the corresponding uh, bin or the, the, the signal will, will be uh, binned correspondingly um, as you select it here. Maximum will be 10,000 base pairs. Okay, now can submit it. Okay, so this was a little bit quicker than um, if you run such a comparison uh, the first time. Reason for that is um, any comparisons that um, are generated are saved automatically. And if you set up a comparison with the same parameters as an already present comparison, um, this comparison will just be loaded. So it's uh, uh, it saves a little bit of time. This would take maybe a few minutes um, if um, the pre-calculated uh, comparison wasn't uh, present uh, yet. Okay, now what do we get here? In this view, we now get a list with the regions, the bins actually, here in 1,000 base pairs, corresponding um, gene and the values for the different data sets that we have here. First, um, the neutrophilic metamyelocyte, we have expression data, and the same here for the segmented neutrophil. Then we get the H3K27 acetylated for the neutrophilic uh, metamyelocyte, the K4ME3 and the K27ME3 plus the K4ME1. And the same here for the segmented neutrophil. Now, if I wanted to um, filter for those regions where I have activating marks in the developed 
neutrophil and the segmented neutrophils, uh, but no or um, only minimum um, activating marks in the um, metamyelocyte. I can just select a number of filters here from my filter drop-down list. On the one hand, I'd like to get only those um, entries where I have, have a gene annotation. So I can say, okay, I want to see only those regions where there is also a known gene. And then I'll just select um, two marks actually, the K27 acetylation and the K4 methylation here for both of my cell types. Just need to add them one by one here. Here for the neutrophilic metal metamyelocyte and then for the segmented neutrophil. Okay, now I need to specify the filter values and I need to specify the operators. Here in this case for the metamyelocyte, I specify a filter value of less or equal to 0 0.1. I need to change the operator here, so I can just click here on the symbol and change it. And the same for the K4 trimethylation. And on the other hand, I specify a minimum value of 50, both for the K27 acetylation and um, the K4 trimethylation for the segmented neutrons. And then I start the search. And this now leaves me with 509 regions out of a total of approximately 2 million regions. Okay, so from here we can now take the identifiers of the genes that overlap with these regions where we have the corresponding pattern of um, epigenetic marks and run a pathway analysis. This path analysis now analyzes the gene IDs that we have in our list and uh, does an over representation analysis of uh, biological terms in a number of different biological categories, so in pathways but also in. Uh, gene ontology categories, um, associated tissues, associated diseases, etc. And uh, we will get then a list of the overrepresented terms. Which we then can use to display the corresponding genes in gene networks. So here on the left hand side we have a pane that shows us the different uh, 
categories. We have canonical signal transduction pathways. We have uh, signal transduction pathways from the literature mining. We have the gene ontology categories. We have diseases. We have tissues, co-cited genes, co-cited TFs, and pharmacological substances. And in each of these categories, we have a list of terms. You can click on any of the headers here. We have a list of terms that are overrepresented in the genes that have been input here into the pathway system. And the most overrepresented um, uh, categories are here at the top. Um, Overrepresentation is measured by a, a p-value. You also see how many of the input genes are actually um, annotated with the corresponding terms. So here in the first entry that we have here, the EXTAT uh, pathway, we have 10 um, genes in our input list out of the 50 genes that are um, annotated in the pathway. Um, in and uh, you can see, for example, if you go to the um, tissues, here where we have the associated tissues that come from the literature mining, we actually find that uh, neutrophil as a uh, cell type is the top overrepresented um, tissue, and we have uh, 51 genes here um, that have um, the corresponding annotation. You can click the entry, and the program will then generate a co-citation network out of the genes. This is shown here in a a uh, view that also shows the cellular compartment where the corresponding gene product is to be found in a schematic way here in the nucleus, in the cytosol, the membrane, or the extracellular space. Just zoom in here a bit. If you prefer a different layout, you can change the layout down here using um, these buttons. There is a, um, a toolbar down here that allows you to uh, manipulate uh, the networks in different ways. And here in the layout, you have two other um, options. One is the centric um, layout, and uh, the first here is actually a hierarchical layout. I'll just uh, take that one. The hierarchical layout tries to um, to um, place the nodes in your co-citation network um, in a way that uh, the information flow goes from the top um, to the bottom. The different connections that you see here are based on different types of information that we have from uh, the co-citation. If you see such a um, solid line, we have actually extra created annotation that there is a functional relationship between the connected genes. If you have a dotted line, then we have an automatically extracted co-citation um, information. And you can double click on such a connection And this connection will then, um, or the, the data that are actually the base for this connection will be, will be shown here. In this case, we have, for example, um, expert annotation in three publications, including the links uh, to the publications. So if you click on that link, you get the corresponding abstract from PubMed. You can also double click on a node, on a gene. For example, this one here, FCGR3B, this is short for the um, FC receptor with a low affi it's, uh, affinity for um, IgG. 
This is actually a gene that is uh, constitutively expressed in neutrophils. There is um, another form that's called FCGR3A, which is expressed in other hematopoietic cells, such as monocytes or uh, macrophages. And in the gene info that box, you get information about um, that gene, functional information here, for example, from uh, the NCBI, synonyms, proteins, etc. DNA sequence-based information, biological knowledge mining, you can click on each of the headers here and again get the information here um, in detail. For example, you can get the um, expression values um, from Blueprint for the corresponding um, gene. So here we come from um, bone marrow, actually. So if click the bone marrow expression data. We find that we have a considerable expression here in um, band form neutrophils, but actually more here in the neutrophils, in the segmented neutrophils. So band form neutrophils would be one um, step before uh, the segmented neutrophils in the development. And um, if you look at the neutrophilic metamyelocytes and myelocytes, which are the earlier steps in the development, it's um, still um, less um, than what you see here in the, in the band form neutrophils. Similarly, you also see high expression in neutrophils in cord blood. Here we have mature neutrophils, again with high values. And also in venous blood, there are also some data from mature neutrophils from different donors, and they also show high expression. Okay, so much for a short introduction to the pathway system here on the genomatics um, visualization um, system. Then I'd like to show you the visualization in the genome browser. So if we go back here to our list of um, regions where we have the corresponding combination of uh, epigenetic marks um, and uh, we want to see a specific, um, a specific gene. We can just add a filter for the gene and I'll just take this FC, FCGR3B Let me just have a look at. Click on the search button. Now we get two regions that overlap with the FCGR3B um, locus, where we have, um, you'll see that the expression here in the neutrophilic metamyelocyte is uh, much lower than in the segmented neutrophils. And you also see that there is a market difference in the in the histone marks here between the metamyelocyte and uh, the segmented neutrophil. In order to open this in the genome browser, just click here on this browse link. Take only a little until it is loaded. Now here in the, in the genome browser, 
you see that you get the sequence here in the color code. This will depend on the on the zoom level whether you see the color code or whether you see the um, the uh, actual sequence code. You have some tracks here that um, show you, for example, promoter promoter regions. Um, then you have uh, the transcript uh, track and automatically the tracks um, that you used in the comparison uh, are loaded. You see the expression data. It takes a little until everything is loaded. You see the, uh, here the um, red arrowheads. Um, as long as they are red, the data are still loading. And as soon as we have the data in the system, they will turn gray as the other ones um, appear. So we have RNA sequencing data. We have then the tracks for the K27 acetylation, the K27 methylation, trimethylation. We have um, the K4 monomethylation and trimethylation. So that's all for the um, metamyelocytes. And the last four here are the same then for the um, segmented neutrophils. Okay, you can. Okay, here, here they come. You can click on such a header, um, of, of, uh, such a um, arrowhead, and uh, see the track then in detail. By default, uh, the annotation tracks that we have here are um, collapsed um, to um, have minimum the minimum height of uh, the track. Here we see that we are. Um, somewhere within the FCGR3B locus, you have a, a transcript here. Then you see the coverage with the RNA-seq data, and you see the coverage here with the histone marks um, down here. You see that in the metamyelocytes, there is nothing directly in this region, but we see um, the K27 acetylation signal here in the segmented neutrophils. Um, we also see the K4 methylation, trimethylation signal, and we actually also see the K36, um, which would be um, for the transcription, actually. Now we can just zoom out a little so that we see the complete locus. Oh, that was a bit too far. Okay, this should be okay. We see the structure of the annotated transcripts where we have the exons here, the thicker line, um, the introns, the untranslated uh, parts of the exons here in, in of intermediate thickness. And we get the data loaded then for the histone marks and for the expression data in the whole locus.
on the right hand side here you see a um, the numbers here actually represent the um, coverage in that region, the minimum and, and maximum coverage that, that we find here for the um, for the um, RNA sequencing data we get a maximum here of 490 approximately for the for the um, metamyelocytes and we get more than 11,000 for the segmented neutrophils. The numbers for the regions of uh, histone marks just uh, are either zero or one, so zero if there is nothing and one if, if, if we actually have a um, region where we have the corresponding histone mark. Okay, now let me see whether I can already, no, not yet. Still picks a little until it's loaded. Okay, so here we are. So we see on the one hand we have um, the difference actually in the coverage with the activating marks. Um, here we see some activating marks for the ME3 also in the, the um, metamyelocytes, but there is considerably more in the segmented neutrophils. And we see the um, K27 acetylation only in the segmented neutrophils and not in that area, uh, region for the um, precursors for the metamyelocytes. The expression that we see here um, is actually different between the two tracks. Um, every track has its own um, its own scaling. And I'll just change the scale type here so that we have a common scaling of the two tracks so that we can see the difference more readily. See now after we rescaled the track, we have only visible coverage for the mature neutrophils and uh, almost nothing at all with only correspondingly lower values here um, for the precursor um, form. You can, if you want to see exactly where each region stops and starts, you can change again the type of the plot. So if you change the plot type here from a bar chart to a region map, and apply that to all of the histone mark tracks. It's recalculated and uh, then you see we get the exact position where each uh, mark actually starts and ends. You can always, as I said, you can always, uh, there is more, there are more annotation tracks uh, available for the genome browser. So you can add additional tracks here. And um, this can be done using the button that you have up here called add remove tracks. So, for example, if I wanted to add 
data for a, an intermediary stage uh, for the band form neutrophils that we also have um, from this donor. Um, I can add, for example, the coverage for the expression data by selecting here from the BAM file tracks, select blueprint BAM, then we have, uh, we are in the bone marrow. And we have the band form neutrophils here. RNA sequencing. And we have here the donor for which we already have the other tracks. So I select this for the RNA sequencing and this is added now here. Plus I can also add data for the chip sequencing. And I'll take that from the bed files. Let's collapse this here. So in the bed files, we have all the other blueprint data here as well. Select the bone marrow, band from neutrophil, chipsec, and for example, add the K27 acetylation mark for the stoner and add the K4 trimethylation mark as well. Here we are. So now we got the expression here. Okay, we can again change the scale type to the global common author scale, then it will also be scaled together with the others. We see that there is intermediate expression here. And um, if we look at the um, activating marks, we also see that um, here for the um, K27 acetylation and um, Similarly, we see it for the um, K4 trimethylation mark. Okay, so much as to what I wanted to show you. Sorry for the technical problems that we had. And uh, yeah, there is still some time for questions if you have any. And I will try to answer them. I see some. Oh, here we are. Okay, so I saw Okay, there was one question. The pathway program selected 405 genes out, out of a total of uh, 509. Uh, what did it exclude? So that's uh, due to the fact that um, you get 509 entries here. Let me just uh, remove this filter once more so that we can show that. Okay, so we have our 509 entries. 
but for some of the entries, uh, we actually get um, several uh, or the same the same gene actually. So it adds up then to the uh, 405 genes that uh, that are left. Is the browser, then was another question, whether the browser is specific for blueprint data or can you import data from um, external sources? We have actually additional additional data, Just I'll just show you that again. Um, we also have data from ENCODE. So this would be under public here. Yes, I won't load it, <laughs> just show you. So from ENCODE we have DNA hypersensitivity regions, histone, again also histone modifications um, from different um, uh, tissues. And we have transcription factor binding sites for different transcription factors, again for different tissues. Um, also as super tracks um, for different uh, transcription factors, you see the list here, and um, a number of other things here, for example, chromatin states. Um, this comes from a publication, uh, Ernst et al., um, where we also have a prediction of whether there we have um, an active promoter here or an, an enhancer, etc., or a repressed region, for example. The gene annotation that we are using here in the in our system, yeah, yeah. So blueprint itself is gen code. Um, in the genomatic system, uh, we have our well, it's called Eldorado annotation, and uh, this annotation is actually a combination of uh, the RNA sequence uh, of of the RefSec and uh, Ensemble and uh, GenBank transcripts with, um, so we remove any, any duplicate uh, transcripts from them. Okay, then there was the question whether we can export or how we can export analysis results in PowerPoint. Um, you, you know, so we can, what you can export is uh, the graphs. So for example, here we have, you have an export option here for the graph in uh, the browser, or you can export the current view either as a JPEG or as a, a PNG file. And you can also export the um, networks in uh, the genomatics pathway system in different formats. Yes, yeah, so there was uh, another question whether you can create custom tracks and upload your own data. No, that's, that's not possible. Okay. So that's, that's all the questions that I see at the moment. I hope that helped. Okay. So if there aren't any more questions, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Um, if you want to give feedback, please um, give it to blueprint at genomatics.de and um, yes, yeah, so I wish you a nice evening, a nice rest and well, hope to see you or hear you soon. Bye-bye.